space fans. It's Tarek Malik, editor-in-chief of Space.com here at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City. And uh, they have this great new Apollo when we went to the moon that we're going to take a quick walk through. Uh, it'll run from late March to September of 2024. And it's pretty amazing. So of course, this is where the Space Shuttle Enterprise uh, is home, where it finds its home, basically. You can come here to New York, see a space shuttle, or the first space shuttle, actually. Uh, and they've kind of redecorated. This was like the 321 uh, uh, landing uh, walkthrough on the way in to see the space shuttle uh, in here. Instead of that, you see JFK talking about his historic rice speech. Why does Rice play Texas? Why does... We choose to go to the moon. We choose we to choose go to the moon, he says. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but, but because, because they, they are, are hard. hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win on the others too. That's the September 12, 1962, his speech at Rice University during the early days of the space race to the moon. Of course, by then, Yuri Gagarin had already flown in space in 1961. And here's the entrance proper. You've got the logo for Apollo when we went to the moon. Sputnik above here. That's that beeping noise that you hear when it launched on April 12th. Or pardon me, on uh, in October, um, what was that, 1957? April 12, 61 is when Gagarin launched. And of course, in case you missed it, there's the Space Shuttle Enterprise right above me, doing all of the fun things that it's doing. You come here, you'll see Warner Von Braun's desk mock-up, including all the tools they used to use to calculate all those. I see some calipers, I see a slide rule. You've got the, the desk themselves. Here's Werner von Braun talking about satellite uh, communications and whatnot, weather uh, satellites. Werner von Braun and Sergei Korolev, the Soviet uh, uh, space program chief. And the original rockets that launched Sputnik on uh, uh, into, into space, as well as the Jupiter C that launched Explorer 1, 2. After you see those early days, you'll come in and you'll see the spacesuit that uh, uh, a spacesuit of the type worn by Yuri Gagarin on that first flight, including the rockets that they used. And there's the wheel, the nose, the nose landing gear of Space Shuttle Enterprise. Then that, okay, these are one these are one seater spacecraft. You got Vostok on the one side, right over here, uh, and then of course there's the uh, the Mercury Redstone and the Atlas. Uh, the Mercury Atlas uh, for the Mercury flights, uh, both suborbital and orbital. Then you get the Gemini and Voskhod two-seater rockets, and then the Soyuz and the Saturn rockets for the three-seaters, plus the Saturn V, of course, which sent people to the moon. And the moon rockets, the Saturn V moon rocket with the, the N1 Soviet rocket, which never actually made it to the moon. You can see a launch of a Saturn V over here with Apollo 4. That's gorgeous. And then kind of a glimpse of what else was going on. It wasn't just NASA and the space race going on. You had, of course, the Civil Rights Movement. You had the Vietnam War all going on at that same time. So there is a lot of, a lot of context about it all. Of course, here's a Mercury space capsule. The USS Intrepid was actually used to retrieve uh, one Mercury mission as well as a two-seater Gemini mission. And over here is a theater to experience the Saturn V launch up close with the sound and the fury of its engines. Now when they landed on the when they landed on the moon, it was one of the most watched events of all time, including that moonwalk there. So you've got kind of how everyone would have experienced it if they weren't home. They'd have to go to a... Can you hear that? Let's see. 
One giant leap for mankind. People watching, watching it on the front of a um, an electronic shop. You can see their spacesuits here too. And this is the the um, Apollo A seven L spacesuit. This is just kind of like the body part of it. You can see all the attachments and whatnot for it. But if you come over here, some newspaper headlines, you'll see the actual hand casts of the Apollo 11 astronauts used to make um, their customized gloves. You've got Michael Collins over here with his wedding ring still on, on his fingers, plus Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as well. And then this is what went around the internal parts of their gloves. You've got their, their, um, uh, their glove covers here, their EVA gloves, their boot covers so they can walk on the moon. And their helmets, too, right over here. Of course, this is the center helmet with a little pad for their head, and it's all glass. Then it has a visor cover, and then the visor itself to protect their skin, their eyes, and everything on the surface of the moon. And of course, over here is a Saturn V, a scale version of it. But out of all that, only this part came back, the crew capsule part. They threw away the lander. They threw away all the rest of the rocket, brought everything back in this capsule. But you'll also be able to walk on the moon, see what that was like here. You can see, you can see there's, there's like a little lunar surface <laughs> that you can walk up. You can get up close with a foot pad for an Apollo spacecraft and see a Soyuz spacecraft right here. And of course, this is the, what, what cosmonauts fly in You can kind of get up and close inside and see they fit three people in there. And of course, over here is excuse me, sorry, the lunar rover, the first electric car on the moon. Looks like you can actually hop into the driver's seat and take it for a spin, or at least imagine. But that is an epic, and right underneath the back of the space shuttle. And of course, you'll close out the exhibit by seeing kind of the early visions for going to Mars with this giant winged plane. Of course, now we have a helicopter on Mars that has finished its mission. You've got the International Space Station. We've got Apollo Soyuz that followed Skylab after the Apollo program and Shuttle Mirror, which followed up on that international cooperation uh, in the, the 90s and led to the International Space Station work. Plus, the space launch system kind of capping it off and leading to a new generation of moon exploration. Of course, Artemis 1 launched uh, to the moon without a crew in 2022. And in 2025, NASA hopes to send four astronauts to the moon. Again, to kind of circle it like Apollo 8. And then come back before the first crewed moon landing of the Artemis program, Artemis 3, in 2026. But if you are in New York, this is definitely an exhibit you're going to want to see. You won't want to miss it, space fans. It's absolutely epic. It's the largest exhibit, traveling exhibit, that the Intrepid has ever put on. And it's only here through summer 2024. So with that, I am Tarek Malik with Space.com, and I will catch you all in the next one. Thanks a lot, space fans. Saturn V! Space Shuttle! It's a rear end.